Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Mile and Podcast. We're doing a s- simple setup today. Uh, no summer of guests today, but it's going to be continuing on pretty soon, so stay tuned, and we'll get you guys some more guests on the channel. We've had a lot of good ones so far, though. We've had SoCal Exploring, Fossil Pebbles, Eddie Tainment, all been on the podcast. Yes, they have, man. It's your boy Sam back at it again. Back at it again. We're back in the studio setup, so we're gonna do a. We're gonna do back. We're going back to our roots today. We're gonna be. Um, we're gonna be doing some just news today. News. We haven't done news in a while. Um, we were gonna originally do Midsummer, but he fell asleep through most of that movie and it didn't really interest him too much. No, I, I mean I was interested. I, I don't get me wrong. I was tired. We watched it. I forgot what time we watched. We watched it like at like eleven at night or like yeah something like that. Ten. Yeah, it was late. I was tired. It was a Friday night, <laughs> and I, it's been a while since I watched it, and so my mind's not. Super there. So I mean, I remember. But just in short, though, just what are, what are you giving it? What's uh, what's your out of five? Probably seven. Out of five? Oh, out of five, <laughs> uh, probably three. Three? Yeah, I say around there, about three. It was just a weird movie. It was weird. Um, I'll probably make a video, a solo video on that, uh, comparing that and Hereditary. But uh, we're gonna go back to some news today. Um, some some good stuff. Just a little FYI before we get started. Midsummer Scream is coming up August third and the fourth, twenty nineteen, at the Long Beach Convention Center. Um, I am not getting paid to advertise this. I'm just advertising what we'll be doing there. Yes, we We're will. We're going to be filming three podcasts. Count them. Uno, dos, tres. Two on Saturday, one on Sunday. And uh, the first one, we're going to be kicking off with Kim and Ket, Stay Alive, Maybe. Their podcast is out now on anywhere you can stream a podcast from Spotify, uh, iTunes. It's on YouTube. Um, so we're going to be uh, having them on the show Um that Saturday morning when the convention opens up, so that should be fun. Yeah, and if you guys have any questions, send them our way. Yeah, we'll be happy have, to ask them. If you guys have questions for Kim and Ket, um, send, it, send, it, send them our way, and we, like Simon said, we'll be happy to uh, ask them for what you guys think. So that, that's going to be fun. And then after the HHN panel on Saturday, we're going to be sitting with our good friend Adam from Theme Park Pass. And it's not Adam who ruins everything. It's not Adam who ruins everything. It's Adam from Theme Park Pass. And it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. We're gonna talk a little bit about the HHM panel, what they announced or what they've shown us, and uh, break it down right there. And then the next day, we're after the Not Scary Farm panel, we're gonna be sitting down with our good friends from Fractured Compass Productions, yeah, talking a little bit about what they've shown us at the Not Scary Farm panel, and get an kind of insight of what they think being scare actors of the show, um, of how the how the events looking so far. So it's gonna be a good weekend, a busy one. And then that Sunday night at 7 p.m., you can catch uh, at least oh, probably you too. Me yeah. and Sammy will be down at Pulp Fiction Comics in Long Beach to uh, catch a live showing of Kim and Ket Stay Alive, maybe. Um, we're going to go support our friends over there because uh, they were nice enough to come on our podcast, and I'm very excited to see their show live. I mean, yeah, it's going to be a busy weekend, so if you catch us, stop us. We'll respond. We'll happy. Take a picture. We'll take talk. Take a picture. Talk. Yeah, we'll be there. We'll, uh, if you guys can find we're going to set up a location for the podcast so uh go feel free to come by and stop by and watch us record a live show of the podcast it'd be cool to have like a nice little studio audience um but yeah I- i'm really excited though for sunday night pulp fiction comics kim and cat stay alive live you know i to be honest you know i should probably do my research before we interview yeah i have no idea what we're walking into they have an amazing podcast um their podcast is a horror comedy podcast so yeah basically one of them watches a horror movie and the other one doesn't watch that horror movie. And oh, then wow. they, they play this game as to, uh, well, they basically, they tell you the entire horror movie. They break it down for you. Yeah. And then they play a game as they, they are breaking it down, which is pretty much like um, as they're going, they list off a bunch of characters as to uh, who's going to live, who's going to die. And the, and the other person has to guess uh, who's going to live and who's going to die. They do that right in the beginning. That way they can uh, figure out if they've gotten them right or not. 
um, and they just they, they tell funny jokes. They're just hilarious on the podcast. Um, no, yeah, definitely. That's something I'm going to be doing my research on and watching. So. Yeah, I think they put out new episodes every Wednesday or Thursday, I believe, and then they do a mini Morbid Monday, which is basically they'll break down a trailer of some sort of horror and um, kind of like their, their, their little show that they do on Wednesdays or, or Thursdays. I think it's Wednesdays. But kind of like their show that they do, um, they basically break down that trailer and you see – uh, what they think about it and stuff like that. So it, it's pretty good. And I'm, I'm really excited to see them live. They're going to be doing giveaways. They're going to be interacting with their fans. So oh, wow. Sounds like a good time. Sounds like a good time. Um, so, yeah, catch us at Midsummer Scream. It's going to be fun. <clears throat> yeah. Have a good time. So let's move on with the show now. We are here live back in the studio, like I said. And it's been kind of a crazy couple weeks for us. We've been doing um, – not only have I been working uh, for Theme Park Pass lately, doing construction updates, you know, we've been just – busy grinding on these podcasts getting guests together yeah. um we do have <clears throat> potentially a big podcast coming our way in the near future so yeah, we'll be on the lookout for that fingers crossed fingers, fingers crossed if we can get all three of them on the on the podcast yeah. that'll That's be fun be a good one so um just just keep an eye out so we've got some exciting stuff coming to the channel but nonetheless you guys are here for some horror news so let's talk a little bit about that horror news we're going to start off first they have started filming the new ghostbusters 2020 movie Ghostbusters 2020. So we're going back to men. We're going back to men. We're bringing back the original Ghostbusters. Original. Original who are still alive. There's yeah, so who are you going to call? The Ghostbusters, man. There we go. Paul Rudd's going to be in it. Finn Wolfhart's in it from Stranger Things. Wow. Yeah, it's got a pretty good cast, and they released the first official picture. I'll put the picture on the screen for you guys, but I'll show you right here, Sammy. Here's the first official picture for Stranger Things. Uh, you mean uh, not Art Stranger <laughs> Ghostbusters? Ghostbusters. Then Wolfhard's in it. So I, you know, I just got off the Stranger Things binge recently. Yeah, no, so. I still need to watch it. But uh, yeah, Finn Wolfhard's gonna be in it and stuff, and I'm really excited for this. They're bringing back. They're going back to the roots, and it should be pretty fun. Like we just went back to the roots. We with just news. went back to the roots, man. Um, are you a fan of Ghostbusters? Yeah, I d I like the original Ghostbusters. I like the remake, um, and I'm excited for it. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not like, oh yeah. Ghostbusters, super like give me any all. You mean yeah. give me any classroom? I'm gonna tell you what's up. Yeah, but I've enjoyed watching them. But I like you the know little enough to get you around. Yeah, yeah. Um, I get you. Yeah, I love Ghostbusters. You know, they they they're funny movies, um, and they got some good horror elements to them. The ghosts are cool. There's rumor that they're gonna be doing a Ghostbusters maze this year at Horror Nights. Fingers, oh really? Fingers crossed for that one. I'd very much. Look you know what'd be really that. cool? Like if they took an idea from Not Scary Farm and made it interactive. Yeah. So, like, you know, the same way, what's that maze where you... Uh, oh, the zombie. The zombie one where, like, you shoot they said, yeah, the, the plasma, the, yeah. the, the photon blasters that they use to get the yeah. ghost. That'd be so fun. That'd oh, be I'd so be, much fun. I'd be all over that, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That'd so, be Universal, so if you did it, you know... We'd like, love you. Yeah, we'd love you for it. It'd that'd be make fun. the maze, like, way better. Yeah. Um, I'd be all over that, though. But there's a lot of stuff I want to see in this maze. Uh, potentially, a lot of the famous ghosts that they show in the movie... Um, yeah, the, li the library ghost is a famous one. Yeah, um, Slimer, of course, is a huge one, and of State Puff Marshmallow would be another big one yeah. if they can pull that off. Which they've pulled off something. They've pulled off big things in the past, so I have no doubt they can pull this off. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I think it would be a, a nice change of pace. Yeah, um, because obviously they they try to scare the living turd out of you. Yeah. So this one, you know, they would scare you, but it'd also be like really kind of get to show a different element. Yeah, very much, but. Nonetheless, this movie's supposed to drop next year. I think spring or summer of 2020. There oh, is a so little they're putting they're they're going to be on a time crunch. Yeah, they're on a time crunch. They're they're starting to they just I think they just started filming uh, today, or like pretty recently. But yeah. um, if you want right now, there's a teaser trailer out on YouTube right now that just kind of for an announcement. They go to this barn. You see some lights flashing in the barn, and they show, of course, the infamous uh, Ghostbusters uh, hearse. Yeah. With the lights and everything on it, and it just it shows the logo real quick, and it just says 2020. So. No, I mean that's cool. I, I enjoy that. You know. It's something to get you excited for. You know. Yeah. Next bit of news we're going to talk about is uh, Blumhouse, and we just saw the trailer for this the first time. Me and you both watched it. Yeah. Uh, we just saw this new trailer for this new movie, The Hunt. Oh yes, yes, The Hunt. Um, yeah. Blumhouse is producing it uh, another Blumhouse movie this one honestly though like I so earlier today I saw some some promos for it and I saw like a little kind of like advertisement like style promo for it where like they were advertising the hunt yeah um, kind of like a, an infomercial if you will yeah but this one is a really star-studded cast who be looking at I, I, I don't remember we have, in I just dropped my phone we have a lot of people in this movie yeah um, let me see if this article um, 
has anything. But nonetheless, the movie looks interesting. It looks like a, a more violent Hunger Games, if you think about it. Yeah, I, I don't know if I would say Hunger Games is what I was thinking. Um, I was thinking more... What was I thinking? I don't know. I don't think Hunger Games is a word I would be looking for. Because I, I don't think they're trying to kill each other, are they? I feel like there's... It's a hunt... Or be hunted type deal, right? It's a hunter be hunt, hunt, hunted type deal, and, and in the like it's the a trailer, game. There's like a lady, right, who created the yeah. game. Yeah. So there's a, in the beginning of the of the uh, trailer, we do see, of course, this girl. She thinks she's she doesn't know where she's at. Yeah. First of all, they tell her she's in. What is it? Uh, Arkansas. Ar yep. Arkansas. Ar <laughs> Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah. Uh, they tell her that she's in Arkansas, and uh, you know she she kind of is like a little skeptical about it. Yeah. And she starts like saying like uh, I don't think I am. And you see like the, the the guy in the back of the counter. He's slowly reaching for a shotgun. Yeah, which is super cool. Which she kind of knows something's already up. So then she freaking bashes the he the lady's head yeah. in. And then she freaking mm. goes in back and grabs that shotgun and ends up killing that guy. And then she freaking blows the freaking lady's head off. Yeah. See, like, and to be honest, I didn't know what to expect. I had no idea this movie was being made. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, what kind of like horror movie is this? Like kind of like, I thought it was like one of those movies like Jane, like, like she's a Jane Doe. Yeah. And like she was going to like, she has to figure out who the heck she was. Yeah. Not that's, how, that's how it kind of pulls you in. Yeah. In the beginning. And then you, and then it immediately switches off to like you find out that they're part of this like experiment or I don't know what it is. It's just, it's something of a, it's called the they call it the manor or something like that. That's where they're supposed to be at. Yeah. I've read more about that on the um, on the promotions that they've been doing. And they're in this woods area, and there's people that are like pretty much hunting them. And yeah. we do see, of course, all these people. They're they're like, oh, how did you get here? How did you get here? It's one of those kind of like, where are we? How did we get here? Yeah, kind of like saw act. Like, yeah, like it's got some saw show. like kind of saw vibes to it, which yeah. I saw. Um, but the, the cast is is really pretty star studded. Um, if you don't know these names, go ahead and IMDb them. But the, yeah. I, I mean, if you see their faces, you'll know who they are. But we got a uh, Betty uh, Gilpin, who's I think the main the main girl that you see in the trailer. Yeah. Um, uh, Hillary Swank. She's um, the, like, the I would assume maker. she's probably the the villain. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Emma Roberts, who's uh, of course. Oh yes, yes, she was in there. She's uh, an American Horror Story alum. And lately. she was on Scream Queens. Scream Queens, yeah. And uh, Nancy Drew. Nancy Drew. She <laughs> goes back <laughs> to her Nickelodeon days yeah. and that uh, that one show she did. I forget what it I was don't called. I forget what show she was. Um, on. Justin Hartley. Uh, he Justin Hartley. I knew who he was. He actually was the Green Arrow on Smallville. Okay. So yeah, he's he. I know who he is, and he's a pretty good actor. Glenn Howerton, he's the one that I was telling you that's from that show. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. He plays one of the main characters. He plays Dennis. He's hilarious. Um, Jim Clark and Charlie Slaughter and Dean West. So it, it's a pretty star-studded cast. Yeah. If you look a lot of the a lot of the faces in this in this movie, you're gonna know who they are. Yeah. You'll see them from various works and stuff yeah. like that. But. Um, it's interesting. They got to survive, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this plays out. This looks more like a thriller than a horror. Yeah. Which um, Blumhouse is known for doing a couple of those. Like Get Out was a thriller movie. Yeah. Um, and they they done a couple other thriller movies. So it's a Bl it's under the Blumhouse Tilt House, right? Blumhouse, no, just Bl that one's Blumhouse Deductions. The other the other trailer that we saw about the the guy that goes to the future, or you know he his niece. Oh dies, yes, yes, yes. That was Blumhouse. Which Tilt. we'll talk about that. Uh, Maybe not another podcast, but uh, that movie looks pretty good too. Yeah. But um, this this is being produced by Blumhouse, and this looks really good. So I, I'm I'm kind of excited for it. Yeah, no, I, I'm excited too. Obviously, you know, we both uh, love movies, um, whether they're horror or not. Um, and I'm excited to see what it what it brings because the trailer was captivating. Yeah, so it caught us it caught our attention. Hopefully, we see it. We're gonna go see a, a movie tonight. We'll probably see it again. The trailer. Oh yeah, we'll see. Probably it's a rated R movie, so I would assume we would. Yeah. Um, this is exciting news because I'm a huge DC fan and um, I'm a huge comic book fan. Yeah. Um, John Carpenter is going to be co-writing a Joker one-shot comic book. A comic book? A comic book. So oh, well, how does that? How what, what does it? What does that mean by a one-shot comic book? So a one-shot is essentially just a comic book that's just a one-shot is basically that comic book that they release is just it's just one story so basically they're not going to make any other ones besides that one comic book okay like because so when i was thinking one, one shot thing. i was thinking of all the times they talk about cinematography oh yeah yeah so he's co-writing <laughs> the, the heck? <laughs> he's co-writing the um he's co-writing the comic book with a guy named anthony uh birch now if you guys don't know who that is he actually wrote uh he wrote the game borderlands 2 huh which is a pretty big game out there one of my yeah, favorite games yeah. so with him co-writing and John Carpenter co-writing, I have no doubt that this Joker comic is going to be amazing. Do you think we'll get a Michael Myers in somewhere in there? 
maybe a little cameo of some sort maybe that'd be cool or just kind of like a nod would be cool or yeah. some of his previous work and put in there yeah. but um it's gonna be a halloween issue um this year dc's doing this thing called the year of villains so they're really focusing on their villains a lot and that's what this is going to be part of joker's okay. uh, dc of villains so john carpenter and anthony birch are co-writing this and it looks like it's going to be good. It's, it's supposed to come out around Halloween time. That'll be cool. So I can imagine that if it is coming around Halloween time, that they're going to make it maybe a horror-type Joker. I mean, I would like that, and they probably could not Michael Myers from there. Yeah, no, that, that'll be cool. So is it like a 10 issue, or is it just like one It's just book? one comic book. So it's just one, like... It's a one-shot album. story, so it's not going to be like... So usually, like, uh, an example of a one-shot would basically be this. Like, say, for example, the Batman comic right here. Yeah. They do, of course, a series of stories that keep going on. Every now and then, a comic book will do what's called an annual. And that annual is literally one story that has nothing to do with the story they're currently doing at the moment. Okay. It's just something that they have to do to kind of like every now and then, like every so many issues, they do an annual to kind of like tell you, this is the end of one story arc, here's the next story arc. It kind of just kind of separates each story arc. Um, so okay. basically, this will be that's that's what that will be, a one shot of just one Joker story. It'll probably be a pretty thick comic book. Yeah. Probably be about forty, maybe fifty pages long. Yeah, um, just because it is a one shot. Like usually annuals, that's how long they are. No, but definitely th that'll be cool. Obviously, uh, you're a huge fan of the Joker, and uh, oh yeah, I enjoy some things in life. Uh, I'm a huge fan of John Carpenter's too. Oh yeah, I mean obviously John Carpenter killed it last year with uh, the remake of Halloween. Yeah, I mean I don't know he wasn't. I don't know how much you know. I think he was he that. was a producer, yeah. and of course he did the the, the score for it. Yeah, him and his son. But uh, here's a quote um, from, let me see, John Carpenter. He put, this puts the Joker on a mission to get his swagger back in a world gone bad by outbatting everyone else, proving that the greatest villain is always the one that leaves them laughing. So that's a little preview of what the comic will be like, him trying yeah. to get his bad back in the world. Um, and then Anthony put, he added on, uh, the Joker is one of the greatest villains in comics. I'm proud to be reunited. Oh, no, this is what John Carpenter said. I'm sorry. I'm proud to be reunited with Anthony on this project. Um, and also, I guess Anthony worked on uh, Big Trouble in Little China with um, John Carpenter, which is a movie that he put together, which is pretty good. Okay. Um, but yeah, this one comes out in, of course, October, and I'm very much looking forward to this. Sounds cool. Going to add it to my pool list. So, uh, The Simpsons, every year they do a spoof, a Halloween spoof called The uh, Treehouse of Horror. Treehouse of Horror, yeah. So They're all what, like a million? Yeah, they're on Treehouse of Horror Triple X, so that's 30. 30. Oh, so it's going to be big. So, yeah. So they just actually released a poster uh, advertising the event for this October, and they heavily spoof Stranger Things. Oh, they're going to the Stranger Things spoof? No, I don't know if the whole the whole episode is going to be a Stranger Things spoof, but the, the poster is a, a spoof of Stranger Things. That's cool. So here's the poster right here. Okay. So yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it's a big. It, you see a lot of Stranger Things references to it. Of course, you have uh, Hopper on it, the kids on the bike, the lights with the the writing on it. It's how she communicated. Yeah. Uh, the Shape of Water is on the top right there, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, and they have a little version of the Upside Down and stuff. So they, their own kind of versions of Demogorgons and stuff. Yeah. So uh, that's pretty funny. I thought that that was kind of cool that um, you know, the Simpsons are kind of recognizing one of the most talked about and one of the most popular shows of our generation right now no definitely and that's what is that the longest running animated show in history yeah it's like 30 it's like on 30 something seasons yeah that's crazy or 30 seasons so and it's and they're still going i think they're gonna go till they die i can tell you this though everyone who works on that show voice acting will never have to work again in their life oh no with they royalties so much back pay royalties those guys were making bank, dude. They, yeah. But they continue to do it because they do it for the fans, and a lot of there's a big fan base with it. No, huge fan base, and there's just so much they write about. Yeah. Because I mean, obviously they, they they try to stay relevant. Yeah, and they're they're known for predicting a lot of stuff too. Yeah, which is really kind of creepy. Yeah, it, it, it kind of turns around. Some of them are kind of like they sort of brought it into like. Maybe that's what happened. Yeah. But, like, the one that really trumped me out was the, the Trump thing. Oh, when he like, won? Yeah. And everything? Yeah. Well, not just that. Like, they when he was announcing his campaign. Um, oh, and they did it exactly like how. Like, the exact way he yeah. did. Yeah. So, I don't know if Trump watched the episode. And then got the inspiration. Got the inspiration. It. Or if, like. I would say so. That makes a lot more sense. But. But if he didn't, then it's that's, really that's spooky. creepy. Yeah. Um, so, Jordan Peele, one of our favorite uh, horror filmmakers. He wow. is remaking Candyman. Oh, I've only seen that movie one time. Yeah, so have I. 
but it was really interesting. Yeah, he's with the bees and everything. Yeah. Uh, Nia DaCosta and Jordan Peele are going to be beginning this new uh, remake of Candyman in August, and they're going to be shooting in Chicago. Chirac. So, um, very much looking forward to this. Let's see how he does it. This guy is the modern day John Carpenter. Would you say that? I would say that. This guy has released two horror movies already, and they have been phenomenal. His yeah. his remake of the Twilight Zone, uh, he which he is an executive producer on, has been awesome. Um, I've watched most of the season and I've enjoyed every episode thus far. Yeah, so I, I think he's really killing the game. Um, obviously, we loved him in Toy Story Four. Toy Story Four was hilarious. He was great. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I obviously I know we're a horror podcast and we keep going off topic, but you know, YOLO swag money. You gotta you gotta announce his work though, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I I think yeah I really think yeah I think he. Get Out um, and Us really, sh- really shocked people. Yeah. Um, and really kind of made horror kind of mainstream again. Yeah. Um, and and I think it's a, it's a good thing because, you know, the, 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 he's, he's doing horror and not like your... And I'm not, nothing against B movies and C movies, but he's really, you know, getting good actors... Yeah. Good plot, a yeah, yeah. good script. Um, it's not garbage. Yeah, it's not, it's not garbage. It's not like it's like a cult classic because you're watching because it, it was like super bad. Yeah, but it's good at that point. Yeah. It's like this is like quality and like people are watching it. But yeah, it's not like he's producing crap. It's it's good. Yeah, no, it's super good. It's very good. So. Um, it, you know, it, it, I enjoy it and like I said, I I think the cinematography is beautiful. The oh yeah, like. It made me wonder, like, just after watching us, like, I would, like, I, my first thoughts was, like, okay, cool, like, if I was the city of Santa Rosa, I'm putting up that movie on that beach. Oh, yeah. And, like, if I'm Horn Nights, or if I'm Halloween Horn Nights, oh, we got it. I would be begging to do that maze. That is actually a rumored maze this year. If they do that maze, they are really capitalizing. I mean, I don't see, I mean, they. it's easy for them to get permission for that one, rights-wise. It's a yeah. universal property. Yeah. So it shouldn't cost them too much money to get rights for. If yeah. that, no money at all. And I can just, man, I can just, it'll be terrifying, that maze. Oh, yeah, it'd be a very, very, very good maze. Yeah, I'd you really just enjoy. walk into uh, the the mirror room. That'd be the start, and yeah. the little girl. And, and then, then you just end up in those long hallways towards the end of the movie. That'd be uh, probably the end, which yeah. would be pretty good. But just to see all the... Uh, all the uh, the duplicates popping out at you with the scissors and stuff would be cool. Oh my gosh! It'd be, it'd be really cool. There's a lot of stuff I'd like to see. Or or even just making you go through the line of them. Yeah. Just because you know how like when they're all holding hands. Yeah, yeah. Hands across America. Oh my god, that would be so terrifying. That'd be terrifying. Or if, even if they did that as I don't know if they've already announced their intro. Who? Has oh, oh for the opening ceremony? Yeah, yeah. they've announced all the scare zones. So. So they know what no. the ceremony, open ceremony is. Yeah, we know. What but that, that would be so sick if they did that as an opening ceremony. That'd be really cool, really cool. Yeah, I would really enjoy that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really excited to see what he's gonna bring to his adaptation of Candyman. Yeah. Oh yeah, back to Candyman. Yeah. But no, I mean it's Jordan Pill. You know, I mean this guy's just had a phenomenal couple last couple of years. He yeah. made his directorial debut with Get Out in 2017. And people, and, and in my opinion, I think people didn't expect that. No, because you have a guy who comes from a comedy background. You have a guy who co-run the show uh, Keenan Pill on, yeah. on Comedy Central for the longest. Yeah. And when he finally came out and said he was going to do horror, a lot of people were doubting him. A lot of yeah. people were like, well, dude, you're a comedy guy. How's that going to work? The old expression goes, and I say it all the time, if you can do comedy, you can do anything. No, no, and I, and I agree. Comedy is very hard. Because comedy is the hardest thing to write. Yeah, to get yeah. people to laugh is very hard. Because it's all about timing. And all about timing and all about to see what interests people and what yeah. doesn't, you know? Yeah. So. With him taking on the horror genre, that was that was nothing for him because it's easy to scare someone. Yeah. You can really write something and creep someone out or scare yeah. someone. And I feel like that's what Get Out and that's what Us did. Get Out was more of like a kind of a thriller where you it had you questioning about uh, how are these people doing this? Uh, you know, what's the science behind this and stuff like that? Yeah. Uh, who's next and stuff? Us was one of those psychological horrors where it was like, what if this is actually going on? What if there's stump- something that the government's working on that is stuff like this? With his new adaptation of Candyman, I would assume he would explore more of a, of, of a background of who this Candyman is. Yeah. Um, he'd make it more of a horror movie. With today's technology, he can really capitalize yeah. on 
uh, Candyman's abilities of like summoning bees and stuff like that, which would be really cool, especially yeah. with today's makeup and stuff like that. We can make him like death look cool. Yeah, no, definitely. And I, uh, I think also his ideas of commenting on society. Yeah, is really, really good because there were so many conversations that were struck after Get Out. Yeah, yeah, and more conversations after Us. Yeah. And I really like his ideal, ideal. Idea to really use diverse casting, yeah. Um, because obviously, a lot of horror movies you watch is just nothing but white people, yeah. Which is fine. I mean, that's what that's what that's what Hollywood is. Mm-hmm. But I like that he, he uses diverse casting, and I and I expect him to do the same because I, if I recall right, Candyman does have a pretty diverse cast. Yeah, Candyman actually the the main the main the killer Candyman he's actually he was black. Yeah, which yeah. Um, was played by a phenomenal actor who actually. Uh, you know him best from the Final Destination movies. He's the kind of creepy guy that always comes out and said death always gets what he wants and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah. Yeah. pretty good. Yeah, and also with, with Peel here, th- and this is the reason why I wanted to watch Midsummer because he was super into Midsummer. Like his comment, like he did a review of Midsummer and he really enjoyed it. And that's what yeah. made me really want to enjoy it. And I'm really sad that it didn't meet the expectations I had. I think with him, though, he looks at it as a directorial view. Yeah. Whereas me and you, we look at it as entertainment. Yeah. And he looks at it as a, as a looking at it from a director's eye, like, wow, I like the way he took the direction of this movie, which that's how I look at a lot of movies, too. No, definitely. And I, 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 I see that. I look at movies also behind the scenes as well as entertainment point of view. Yeah. So I always come out with two different opinions. Now, if the movie sucks, but the, the like the, the, the production was was good for me yeah I, I i always have like i said two different opinions and if if they're both good they're both good yeah i would like i said i always have an entertainment uh, opinion which what i thought of the overall movie and then i have a filmmaker's point of view um opinion where i kind of critique or you know applaud how the director s- took his direction of his movie and stuff like that yeah, of course and i think that's what jordan peele uh he he reviewed it on it based on yeah. how the director took direction into this film, how he takes you a bunch of, he throws you a bunch of curveballs leading you up to the final, um, final reveal. No, definitely. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, this Candyman movie should be coming out hopefully in the next year. I'm assuming if he's working on it in August, um, it usually takes about three, four months to film a movie. So yeah, we should see that hopefully in the next year. Um, the last thing we're going to talk about, and it's something that's big. It actually just happened. What's today's date? The 12th. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Today's the 12th. It actually just opened today. Like, they kind of out of the blue, just like, yeah, today it's open. Uh, Jurassic World. Oh, yeah, Jurassic World. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that it opened today. So, this last week or two, they've been doing technical rehearsals yeah. with uh, an actual live crowd. Yeah. And uh, there's been footage on YouTube and stuff. And the ride, to me, looks phenomenal. No, definitely. I agree. I, I, I think the f- ride looks cool. I only got to ride the Jurassic Park original ride once. But at least you rode it. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I like that. Obviously... You you restarted the franchise with Jurassic World. Yeah. Uh, you might as well capitalize on that. Might as well, yeah. And this this is going to be an attraction that will be here probably for the next twenty years. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, especially with new technology, you got to keep up with the new technology. Of course. But I will say this: Jurassic Park, for the ride it is, it ride it was. Yeah. I would say when they made that in the nineties, compared to now, it was still a phenomenal ride. No, definitely, and I agree. I think I think it was a phenomenal ride, uh, and it really cap- captured people's imagination and made them uh, reminisce of when they first watched the film yeah um but i think obviously as a, a theme park you have to stay relevant yeah you have to kind of keep up and yeah and it's so i can see where universe is coming from with this ride too um a lot of theme parks were opening up new rides this year you had disneyland yeah. who just opened up of course star wars star <laughs> galaxy's edge yeah you had of course not to you know opened up their new rapids ride yeah um and they do a bunch of summer events and stuff and yeah. then you have universal who had to capitalize on that somehow and they were releasing of course this new jurassic world ride yeah um and then of course you got like other theme parks doing other stuff but of course. nonetheless it's like it's all about in the end it's all about money and competition they want to keep relevant to what society likes what what people are into these days yeah and they want to capitalize on that they want to make a quick buck yeah. which it's not a bad thing you i mean that's how it's a business you have to if you want to stay yeah. in business you got to make money if there's always a bottom line that you have to meet yeah i mean there's in order to freaking make money you got to spend a little money and yeah. that's exactly what these theme parks are doing and, and definitely and I, and I agree i i think i think a lot of people to, are reluctant to change yeah oh i want the old ride i don't like the opening yeah. i don't like this i don't like that there's old school people who are gonna say that yeah, yeah. I get you. And, then, and that's fine but i think at the end of the day what matters is 
what that eight year old does when they get on that ride. Oh yeah, did they, you just inspire someone? Yeah, and I think that I think that's what that ride does. Yeah, yeah. no, most definitely. Um, but it looks phenomenal. I mean, it opens up to, of course, the um, what is it, the the Mosasaurus or whatever it is that, that big Oh, oh, the one that the, the one in the water. The I have water. no idea what its name is. But I, I forget what his name is. But it opens up to that and, and inside of a tank and stuff, and it just looks awesome. Yeah, that's super cool. And he and he cracks the tank, and you got water coming out at you, and it, yeah. it really went for a realistic feature. And then of course, you go under the waterfall, and then when you make the turn, they still they still leave homages to, of course, the original ride where of they course. Have three uh, animatronics just sitting there with the original three that were always there. Yeah. Um, and then you go, and then you see the the Indominus Rex is broken out. Yeah. And that's where they capitalize on the new uh, movies, where the Indominus Rex is, of course. Um, breaking out of containment and he's yeah. taking over the park and then you go up to the hill and of course they included chris pratt and bryce dallas howard so they reprised the roles for this ride of course which i thought was cool and then uh in the new before you do the the 80 foot drop in the new scene it looks like it's a jungle kind of area in yeah. in the dark so you see of course you see blue you see a bunch of the dinosaurs you see the sprayers you see the indominus rex and then yeah. at the very end you're in the you're in the middle between of a fight of the indominus rex and the t-rex which i thought was when I heard that idea, I was like, that's going to be awesome. Oh, yeah. No, it's super cool. Yeah. Um, and, you know, hopefully we'll get to ride it pretty soon. Oh, yeah. No doubt, dude. We're going to ride it um, pretty soon. Uh, I know I got to go to – I got to go – I'm probably going to go do a Universal update uh, at the end of this month, um, right before midsummer. So definitely going to take advantage of uh, riding that. Maybe after midsummer. I don't know. Um, we'll see what's up. Well, yeah, we'll see what's up. But it should be it should be good. I want to get some uh, footage of that. Uh, that's gonna do it this week for the Mindless Horror Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we just wanted to update you on what's going on in the horror world. Be sure to tune in next week. Uh, we're gonna talk about Crawl. Uh, we saw that today, and it was actually a lot better than I expected. Yeah, I know definitely. Uh, in the meantime, watch it. In the meantime, watch it, and then come back, and we'll 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 break it down yeah, for you. Yeah. Uh, spoilers and everything. So uh, thank you for watching the Mindless Horror Podcast. Don't forget, Midsummer Scream, August 3rd and 4th, we will be there doing three podcasts, two on Saturday, one on Sunday with our friends, Kim and Kat Stay Alive, maybe, Theme Park Pass, and Fractured Compass Productions. We'll also be walking around the convention, seeing what they have offered uh, to buy, maybe uh, getting a couple interviews with some uh, people who are running some home haunts that they do in the Hall of uh, Shadows, yeah. uh, maybe just interviewing other YouTubers. Who knows what will go on? At Midsummer Scream. Yeah, and if you want to walk through a home haunt with me, that should be fun, huh? Yeah, it should be fun. I should probably just, I'm just going to film him getting his reaction. Because I'm already terrified. I'm already terrified, yeah. Yeah, I don't even want to go in that room. But I mean, I and there are mini to. home haunts, too. They're like a minute walk through, two minutes. and uh, They're still going to get me. Still going to get you. They got yeah. people running around and stuff. If you guys want to see Sam get scared, find us. We'll go in the Hall of Shadows both days and, uh, what we're, I'm just that's gonna be an episode of Scared Sam right there, we're scaring Sam. We gotta bring that show back. Yeah, I, think I, I might just save it for Midsummer. We can do a live edition at Midsummer Scream. That would be hilarious. August third and fourth. You should have seen him during Crawl. It was bad. It was bad. Anyway, join us at Midsummer Scream August third and fourth. We will be there. Until then, we will see you guys next week. And thanks for watching. Please subscribe to uh, my channel, Theme Park Pass. Uh, follow me on social media. Instagram at the Knights of Horror, Twitter at Knights of Horror, and uh, we will see you guys in the next one.